Or he's cute. He sounds cute. Well, I can't see him. He's on the I video. know. That's why I was wondering when you said that. I just thought that was cute. Okay, go. What am I telling you? Which one? Steve Stevens. Steve. Oh, because we were talking about that. Okay. Um, Steve, my first day in New York City, when Lenny and I had just gotten off tour, we really did flip a coin, but it just made more more sense to go to New Jersey because his dad had been stationed there. And we were literally, where we lived, and looked out the window at the Statue of Liberty, like right there, that's Statue of Liberty from our house. And so my first day there, after we got off the plane and got settled in and had a meal and a nap and stuff, wanted to go into the city, wanted to go to New York. Got on a bus, rode in Jersey City. We were in Bayonne, went in Jersey City into the Holland Tunnel, came out the other side. You're in traffic, you really can't see anything. It doesn't open up until you turn. There's a big bank that you turn around the corner, not a bank building, a banking mm -hmm. turn. And you wind up right there, that's 42nd Street. You're at the end of 42nd Street, right by 11th Avenue, West Side Highway. That's the SS Intrepid is moored there. And it's a big battleship right next to it is a big amphitheater. Wound up a few years later playing that band show. We played there with Rick Derringer. We played there with a lot of people right there at the end of 42nd Street with the Intrepid right there. It was badass. But uh, I went into the city and I wanted to go to St. Ash. I wanted to go. We didn't have any equipment because we lost our endorsement deals when we went off the road. So we literally had nothing. We went to New York with nothing to take over the world. And we had... Aww. I was 19. Been on the road for three years. And uh, straight, three years straight, solid. And I uh, had two breaks, two two-month breaks. And did over 3,000 shows in three years. I've done more shows than almost anybody I know. And it's, so I went in the city and we had nothing and we were just like, what, I don't know what we're gonna do, but I gotta see what we're up against because I hadn't had to buy anything. My parents bought me my first base and I went on the road and I am a PV in Dorsey. Now I don't have any equipment, I don't have anything. And uh, a couple days later, I got a, a BC Rich Mockingbird in the mail. My dad went and got it. Aww. Got me a real, he asked his friends, what's the best? He didn't know, what's the best? So this my friend at work said, this one's the best base in the world. And, uh, so, so he bought it. He bought it for um, 600 bucks then, 1985. That's beautiful. And it was made in the 70s, it was the early 70s. It was a real Rico, it was a handmade one. But anyway, I went into Sam Ash to go see what things were gonna cost and we didn't know what we were doing when we were walking in. There's Steve Stevens. Wow. I said, looking at him, and he's this big, with his hair. Like, he's tiny, little guy. Big hair, patent leather, whole thing, full-on eyeliner, walking around. And I knew who he was, and he was famous already, but they weren't, like, ridiculous. I mean, it was starting to happen. It was starting to be a big deal. It was a big deal that he was there, but nobody's bothering him. You know, he's just walking around the store, and I'm like, that's Steve Stevens. And he said, yeah. And he was nice. I like it. He was a good guy. And then I wound up playing with him and this other drummer that played with Pat Travers. And another guy, I don't, I don't remember his name, but I think I think his name was Pat, too, for some reason. I think he's a famous drummer, but he looked like a, he had this, these teeth that were like, these weird teeth. That his teeth didn't go like, you know how your teeth go like this? Mm -hmm. These were like this. Mm -hmm. And he um, and he played real, real low in his head. But he's, if I saw him again, I would know. But I played with him. It was at Ace Freely's birthday party at a place called The Bank. And I got this invite. And I'm like, what's this? And I go, and a couple other guys, and they go, you're the bass player. I said, yeah. So I went up there, and there's this Pat guy, that's Steve Stevens, and Ace Freely was there. So I got to play at Ace Freely's birthday party. And you were flipping out? Yeah. I saw him in the room, but didn't get to talk to him or anything. I wasn't. Didn't think I was cool enough to actually go over and pull it off. I wanted a lot of situations I found out later, like, oh, look, I was cool enough. That guy became somebody. He was <laughs> hanging around me forever. I was the cool guy in that situation until he got famous, fucker. <laughs> There's a lot of those. Misdemeanor. The chick, lead awesome. singer from Misdemeanor was dating Joe Belladonna from, from Anthrax. So he would show up at their shows. So, because his girlfriend was the lead singer of the band, it was like, so their shows would get really packed and they would be like, you know, and they wound up, they got a guest, they were the band on some late night talk show, well, a national one, a real one. 
but it was on a cable thing, so it was very short-lived. There was a lot of cross-pollinating going on. Rob Steele from Law & Order was playing with Cycle Sluts from Hell, which turned into um, Circus of Power, which turned into, there was all these bands that had hits that you might not know of, but you'd know the song if I played it. And like, there was a lot of them. And there was a lot of bands, and it was all going on there. And the L.A. bands just seemed so fluff, you know? Like, Cruthling, was, I read the book and all that, and it's like, God, it was so seedy and dirty. And everything. It was seedy and dirty in New York, too, but we were, like, men. You know what I mean? It was, there wasn't anybody trying to be pretty. We looked freaky, and we had the hair like that, but we was not trying to look pretty. We were trying to look scary. Yeah, it was trying to look like, what the fuck is that, you know? And we weren't, and it wasn't even like in a concerted thing. It was just how fucking high can, how tall can I be? How how tall can I be up there? It was really about what it was. How how much how outlandish can we be? You know, how much light can we draw? You know, and that's what we did. And that's it's always been so important to me. I want to know their eyes. And when Lowell Lytle said that to me when I was seventeen, people hear with their eyes. You look pro. You be pro. You go in there and do that, and you look badass, and then you are badass. That's what we do. That's why I like all that shit. That was awesome. You need a podcast, dude. I'm serious. I'm going to get that thing, and we will sit there, and you will just go. Because you go from one musician to the next, and you know everybody's... Pedigree. Yes, you know all the bibliography about everything. Like, it's just crazy. Well, the thing with me that I like... What do I name this? I'm going to upload it right now. I don't know. Fun. I don't know. <laughs> Fun. Rock history. Rock history with Tony. The rock, rock, the um, hit, unknown history. The unknown history of New Jersey rock and roll. No, I mean, like the unknown history of U.S. metal. Okay, I like that.